Okay. I'm a formal JC. Uh, uh, I was a former JCO in training at the Ron Jackson facility in Brownwood, Texas. And they kind of just moved me all over. They moved me from RSU to like dorm to dorm. And it kind of just depended on the night. So I worked there from, uh, let's see, it was like March till July. And they pretty much just threw me on the floor by myself. So they put me in the regulation safety unit by myself and then um they threw me up on the dorms after they sent me back down for more classroom stuff and they just pretty much just left me by myself overnight um yes so there's one incident in particular that occurred in the 300 pod in rsu so um there were several boys, so they were closing down two dorms. It was like, uh, the I know the Freedom Dorm, and then there was another dorm. But there were some boys in there from Freedom that were awaiting transport that were being held. And one little boy was basically denied his medication. And it was whenever, I, by the time I realized it, it was way out of window. So he had called me over whenever transporters were there to like get kids out and ask for his medication. So I went to go ask about it and they basically pretty much told me that he wasn't going to get his medication until he got to the net to his net facility. So I said, so what you're telling me is he's giving his medication out a window and because medication has a hour before and an hour after, and that is the law. And pretty much they couldn't answer me and just got all pissy and just said, like, repeated that he would get his medication when he got to the Nets facility. So I went to go, like, relay the message to that kid. And he, of course, was, like, a little upset. And then whenever um, there was a male staff who came in that basically told him he was being moved to Mart the facility that I think it's over there in Waco I believe is where it's at um he like but completely like freaked out like he looked afraid to go and pretty much just sat on the ground and refused to move and then this male staff that came in pretty much called out on the radio and like at least five men came in and like aggressively like attacked the boy to the ground and I tried to basically go and get in the doorway to get camera footage. And then one of the transporters actually came and was trying to stand in front of me. So I couldn't get full footage. And then there were other staff that were going out of their way to get me to like move to try as if they were trying to get me from keeping camera footage. And basically, um, this boy was scared to death and they ended up taking him and I did call this into the IRC when I got off that morning. Hmm. I would say it definitely was a routine, especially for children who had special needs or psychiatric medications. And they were and that boy, I know for a fact that that boy was on psychiatric medication and they hadn't been given his mood stabilizer. And basically they were refusing to give the, this kid his medication and then came in and aggressively attacked him. And there were several occasions just of that happening, like things of that nature or complaints of kids saying that they were attacked and vice versa. I know for a fact they didn't decontaminate those kids because they would be sitting in their cells needing to shower and I would ask about it. And if they did, they would just hand them some baby soap and like water and like and have them get in the shower. They didn't give them the proper like chemicals to decontaminate. Um, So there was another time close to whenever I it was actually the night that I ended up quitting. Um, there was a little boy who's special needs. He has um, a lot of special needs and issues. And uh, 
he was in the regulation unit that night and was requesting medical attention and saying that he was having an allergic reaction to like peppers and basically like was having trouble getting up and standing up. So I had called the, what what is it called? The infirmary to try to have somebody come and look at him. And basically um, two of the male staff that work in security came in and basically were trying to force him to get up. And he was stating he couldn't walk and they pretty much just threw him on a concrete slab with no mattress, no blanket. Like he was literally in this cell and I had requested his bedding multiple times and nobody was bringing it and basically saying that he wasn't behaving well enough to get his bl- his blanket and like mattress and just like his basic needs. And pretty much um, whenever they came in and because he was stating he couldn't get up, they, sl- they set him on that concrete slab and, and w- refused to allow him to see the nurse. Um, I kept, I basically was really petty and called it over the radio and called it out and stated exactly how it was seated, how, how it was, how it looked and how long he had been in his room with no blanket and no like mattress and that the child was on a concrete slab and just started describing the scene and going over the radio and talking about how he was denied medical care as well. And then all of a sudden they could bring him his mattress and blanket um so they obsessively like lock kids down like routinely and they would frequently deny kids the right to go to the bathroom or call the hotline it was like a nightly thing and there was a time particular that the administrator actually came down to the dorm that i was on it to it was a courage dorm, I believe, to lock kids down. And the kid had asked to go to the bathroom and the kid basically was forced to defecate on himself in order by the administrative because the administrative assistant would not allow this child to go to the bathroom. So there was stuff like that. And then there was just... um. Like, uh, there were target children. So children that, like, there were certain children that staff were targeting that they would send to the regulation unit for no real reason. Just, like, general defiance or attitude. And they would just find a reason to send them there. And for whatever reason, these children appeared afraid. And there's three rooms in the 300 pod that are out of camera view and close to the outside door. And there's no cameras in that area. And they stick the target children in those rooms. Pretty much I intimidate or fear whatever they're doing. Okay. I think they use it to try to gain compliance or basically um, like there's certain children. I don't know how, any other way to say it, but they're their target children. They use them. They target them and basically like upset, like torture them and pretty much until like they're, and then they, these children like have like behavioral issues and are reactive because they're being tortured and abused, but they pretty much um, just use them as like their target and like make excuses as to why they're doing what they're doing. I don't really know how to explain it. Well, um, yeah. So I know, um, staff frequently would turn their body cameras off or um, take them off and that's another reason why it's so concerning that those three rooms are out of camera view because those staff were known for turning and you could tell that the camera was on or off because if it was off there would be like a uh it would there would be a some like letters and it would say ready on it and if it was on light would just flash and it would like blink every so often so I feel like turning body cameras off was just a normal practice and I never really saw anybody getting in trouble for it then there was another little boy who had like self-harming behavior 
that they were always targeting as well. And this boy was terrified to go to the regulation unit and would break down crying and saying that and was willing to go on lockdown in his um vet in his room on dorm. And I finally asked him, who are you afraid of? And he looked at me and told me that he couldn't tell me that he didn't want to put me in danger. I don't think they're therapeutic at all. I think that they make kids worse. They focus on a culture of like authoritarianism and they pretty much, it's pretty much like cycles of abuse and, and recidivism that's like generational and they don't really help kids. They don't focus on mental health care. They just pretty much um, install, like pretty much do like punishment and reward systems and just, and then, and it's just things that don't work. And then they use like violent force. They don't really take the time to see what's behind the behavior they pretty much just say they're a bunch of no good criminals and are going to end up in the adult system anyway. And I, they're just not a very good safe place or therapeutic place for children who need help or are in a crisis.